there's a lot going on with schools going in and out of remote or hybrid. I didn't say that in the prompter. Recent election anxiety. <laughs> Don't you know we ad lib this show? When do we ever just read the prompter? <laughs> Parents are in need, need to find ways to take care of themselves. Dr. Laura Saunders, a psychologist at the Institute of Living, is joining us. Doc, you're talking about something you're calling psychological PPE for parents, which I love. We got to put our masks on in a different way. Yes, so I think we need to acknowledge that during this whole pandemic and add on top of it all the election anxiety that parents are struggling. And so we need to acknowledge how hard this is for them and that they need to find little ways to take care of themselves. So that's the PPE, the personal protective equipment, the, the masks, but the, the grounding and the other things that they need to do to take care of themselves. All right, other than Better Connecticut, you're saying that too much media. Well, too much social media, but if we watch uplifting media that gives you a break from everything, then it's okay, right? <laughs> right, Better Connecticut is uplifting, right? It's, <laughs> it's fun, it's light, the two of you are always making each other laugh. So, you know, the more we can do, uh, get information, but then really shut it down. I mean, last night I had to shut, I had to shut the TV off. It just becomes too much yeah. information. Yes. So doing things that are light and, and, and breezy to offset some of the real kind of heaviness um, and so much uncertainty. Well, and we just had that study that just came out. I know it was done before the pandemic, but just for the kids, too, that social anxiety, all that, the anxiety goes through the roof the more screen time. So I guess that's a human thing. Happens for our kids, happens for us. So we need definite screen time breaks. What do we do instead to, sometimes you just don't even know what to do to make yourself feel better. What are some good coping strategies? So the phenomenon that you're talking about, Kara, is what we call social comparison. And that's what a lot of social media does is it makes, especially for teenage girls, right? You know, when they compare themselves so much, they just feel so inadequate. And we do as parents as well. So what we need to do is we need to know ourselves, know what our risk factors are, know what our particular stresses are, and find ways to detach, to disconnect while staying connected to use grounding techniques, breathing, spending a few minutes to listen to a song, to go for a walk outside, to read a book, to take a break between your work day and then you know, starting your evening. So finding little ways to detach because this is a marathon, not a sprint. We need to find little ways to take care of ourselves. You, you say lack of control fuels stress, which I completely agree with. But sometimes I don't know how to get control of things that I cannot control. Well, isn't it more that we need to accept we don't have the control and focus on the things that we can control? Right. The concept uh, is called radical acceptance. We have to radically accept the things that we do not have control over. We do not have control over how this election pans out. We do not have control over how long this pandemic lasts. But we do have control over whether or not we eat a healthy breakfast or you know, enjoy our cup of tea or coffee or go for a walk for ourselves. We have control over some of the smaller things and that's where we need to shift our focus to what we do have control over and do the things that help us feel grounded and, and take better care of ourselves. It's important to, uh, to identify your stressors. Uh, I like to say sometimes plugging your energy drains. I mean, we all have different things that really drain us. So it, it's important, I guess, to figure out where that is for you and avoid that, or maybe ask your partner to do the things that are really stressful for you and you could do something else that it doesn't really, that might bother them. This is a time where, you know, if you're fortunate enough to have a co-parent that, you, that you, you use each other, that you take some breaks, that you communicate. Um, unfortunately, under stressful conditions, often parents sort of go in separate directions, but we really need them to come together more, to work together. So as much as we can do that to communicate what we need, to say it out loud and communicate it, really makes it feel more valid. Uh, and you say, watch the alcohol consumption. Well, my sisters each week tell me to talk more about wine, but I really think that we need to be careful <laughs> as a coping skill. I think we need to be careful about what we're doing. I generally call it negative coping, but uh, we need to be careful about what we're doing to soothe ourselves um, and make sure that that soothing has a balance with positive coping skills. Okay. Yes, like we're out of time, but we can't underestimate how much exercise helps. Even a walk, it can yes. boost those happy hormones. Absolutely.
Thank you, Dr. Laura Saunders. It's always a pleasure to see you. Take care of yourselves. All right, you Thank too. You. I, Thank you. Last night I was, uh, I was going to have a drink. And I was like, yeah, I deserve a drink. Today. And then I was like, no, you don't need a drink to get through the election. So I didn't have my drink and I went to bed. Good for you. Yeah. And you slept, which was important because a lot of people just, yes. you stay up and you no, watch and you watch and you watch. I and slept. At, at some point I had to stop reading newspaper articles because there's just not an answer. And the best thing to do is go to sleep.